MakerBot Digitizer project really started about two years ago. I wanted a 3D scanner to go along with the MakerBot, the MakerBot 3D printers. And I looked around at everything, and you know, it was all garbage. It was one of those things where, you know, there are really awesome 3D scanners for like boats, but you know, they're like, I don't know, tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they only work on boats. So um, all, there were all these application-specific scanners for the automotive industry and, and stuff like that. And we just wanted stuff that would scan stuff that we could make on our MakerBot. And so we, we went down that road and, and came up. We chose laser scanning, which basically means you point lasers at it and take a bunch of pictures, and you use that laser line to create a point cloud and then mesh it. And the, uh, it was interesting. I was, I was just up talking to Jerry Ellsworth and, and her partner and watched them get into a little argument about which is more important, hardware or software. And, uh, you know, da ra 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 And, uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting battle. But in this, in this case, the hardware is pretty straightforward. We, we really, you know, we, because we've been making 3D printers for so long and we've, in many ways, really perfected the ability to make professional quality prosumer level 3D printers, we were able to bring that to, the, to, to this machine. And you know, we wanted to make it fast, we wanted it to make it easy, we made it friendly, and you know, really integrate well with your life. And we went through the, a process of really, you know, we, we've, got some, we've got two really awesome design, industrial designers, and they go back and forth and battle. And we end up, this, you can kind of see the progression of where we ended up. And, you know, we eat our own dog food. We prototyped these with MakerBots and looked at them. This is one of the earlier ones. But when you do this, you really get to see what things look like and whether or not you're comfortable of, with the proportions and the, everything. We obsess over all the small parts. And we used, even when we were done and we wanted to modify them, we used MakerBots to modify them and improve them. So what you get, what we get, what you can go see over in our, in our booth here is the MakerBot digitizer. And we're just so proud of it. We've been working you know, for about two years on this. And we finally get to, to let, let you get your mitts on it. And um, it's awesome. It's, it, I've, you know, I, we started Thingiverse about five years ago, almost five years exactly. And I've made about 100 designs and uploaded them to Thingiverse in those five years. Some of them 3D printers, some of them other stuff. But I've had the MakerBot digitizer in my office going through using the alpha software. And because you just put something on this turntable and it turns around, lasers shoot at it, and it makes a model, and that's all automated, I've added like another, another like 50 things just in the last two weeks because it's so easy to make models. For animators, that means that you're going to be able to sculpt things out of you know, old school materials like clay and plasti plastiline, and, and you, know, you could even carve things out of wood, put them on here, and turn them into digital designs. For some people, that'll be enough. They'll take that digital design, they'll 3D print it, or maybe they'll put it into a video game or do something like that using that digital design. For other people, they're going to use tools, um, tools like Mesh Mixer, which Mesh Mixer 2.0 just came out last night, free software that let, that's a really great modifying modifying tool. So like, if you want to add more beard to your gnome, you can. <laughs> Celebrate. 